Hello and welcome. Today we're talking about ships, career roles, and limiting factors in Star Citizen. Star Citizen is an MMO, space combat, first person shooter, and industry game. It is literally all of the games in one. It is the most crowdfunded thing of all time, with over $83 million in pledges. There are a lot of ships, game packages, pledge options, career roles available in the verse, and many, many ways to play. In this video, we're going to talk about what ships are available both now and in the future, the various roles in game, your ship upgrade and career paths, as well as assets and limiting factors. This should all help you to decide whether you want to pledge now, uh, and for what ship, whether to upgrade in the future before game release, and what to aim for in game. A lot of this video is my opinion and elaboration and as always with Star Citizen everything is subject to change. First off let's talk about assets and limiting factors. There isn't a planned experience or leveling system in Star Citizen per se so how do you advance? How do you measure your success and what separates you from the pack? There are a variety of assets you will pick up during the game that will act as your advancement. Credits, literally the amount of UEC or money you have. Money is power and it will allow you to buy pretty much anything you could dream of off other players or NPCs in the game if you have enough of it. If you want to buy an Idris Frigate or a Javelin Destroyer, you are going to need a lot of money though. Information. Information has value, knowledge is power. Whether it's mapping and jump node data, the location of an NPC or player base, an asteroid field, or even the location of a battle that's taking place, information has value and a lack of it limits you. Equipment. Your ships, weapons, cargo, all has value and allows you to do different things. A stock F7C Hornet will be good at combat roles, but can't really go mining, and it's not going to be too effective at cargo hauling. Whereas a Hull Series ship can trade, but isn't suited for combat roles. Does your ship have a jump drive? That sort of thing. Equipment is a major limiting factor, but purchasable with UEC, with credits and monies. Manpower, another factor that limits you. You'll be able to use NPCs to man crew stations on your ship. Some ships may require many crew to use effectively, like an Idris frigate, for example. And most roles will be more effective with a human player. Even if you're um, in a one-man ship, escorts and other ships in your group will give you more firepower and more utility. It's an important factor to consider. How many people are you planning to fly with? Reputation. There isn't going to be an experience or leveling system, but reputation is a system they will probably use. Do lots of missions for the UEE Navy and they may say you military spec gear or items or at least sell them to you cheaper. Work in Banu space for a long time for the Banu, eventually you'll be able to buy a Banu merchantman ship from them. Start killing transports, then the system or faction they're from um, that you start killing them in may start to dislike you. This could cost you more money to buy stuff from them, they may restrict your landing on planets and stations or they might just outright shoot you on sight. Your skill, your actual skill at flying, shooting, knowing mechanics, being able to shoot stuff in the first person shooter module, this is straight up important. Good pilots uh, will be able to win in overwhelming odds with a little bit of luck on their side. Uh, people that are good at communication will be able to work well with their teammates. It's a great time to practice with, while the game's in alpha in Arena Commander. Uh, some tasks might just work for you, might be much better suited to the first person shooter module. You might be amazingly uh, good in a mining ship, you might be really efficient, while others you're going to be less effective at. Know your strengths and play to them. Time. Literally the amount of time you can dedicate to playing. If you're going to need to dedicate a small amount of time or have a very low attention span, then trade and mining might not be for you. Time is a resource that will enable you to literally play the game. It's going to be hard to pilot a multi-crew exploration ship uh, like a carrot with your friends if you can only be online for 30 minutes a night and live on the opposite side of the world in a different time zone. So that's a generalised list of assets and limiting factors that will separate players. Uh, basically it's wealth, knowledge, skill and time. Uh, there are loads of others or others that fit into that category, but that's the basics. Careers and roles. So what can you do in the verse? Well, there's going to be a lot of missions given by both players and NPCs, um, escorting, exploring, mining, but there are many, many ways to play. It's effectively a sandbox where you're not limited to one role, you can do a bit of everything you choose to, and there are no real defined missions. But there are, but I mean, you can kind of do anything you want. There are, however, some categories and types of player which we'll discuss here. 
industry roles. So this is mining, gathering, recycling, trade, manufacture, research, quite a lot of stuff. Uh, industry players and jobs will likely have players going out into the verse to mine asteroids, gather fuel from gas giants, uh, salvage stuff, recycle old ships um, in battlegrounds. This could also be players that want to be traders or even ones that want to manufacture or research. The industry game is about resources, time and information, allowing players to make credits from exploitation of these factors. It will suit players that want to try to avoid combat in most situations anyway, though there will be some huge risk rewards based on what you're doing. Hull Ds and Es, for example, can carry a huge amount, making huge profit on trade, but are very vulnerable to pirate attack unless they're given the right escort. Combat and security. So, there are a vast amount of combat roles, escorting transports, clearing pirates out of an area, bounty hunting NPCs and players. These can range from a simple killer group of ships to a large fleet battle. Most ships are capable of combat to some degree, but some are a lot better suited than others at this role. Ah, piracy! If you would like PvP and stealing people's ships, credits, cargo, and or lives, then piracy is for you. Uh, pirates will want a cargo hold of some kind, really, or some way of holding, tracking, uh, stunning targets, some way of disabling them. There is going to be tractor beams and docking collars to make boarding easier. I wonder if you could make prisoners walk the docking collar into space as well. Some people are going to want to be pirates, you evil, evil peoples. Racing. Racing will be a solid way of making credits in the verse. If you are any good at it, there are only a few ships that are really suited to it though, though there might be different classes of racing, you might be able to have Aurora races, that sort of stuff. Racing ships are normally quite suited as personal transports and interceptors as well. Exploring, literally going out into the verse, finding points of interest, recovering alien artifacts, finding untapped asteroid fields, new jump points, and even just mapping data. Um, Exploration is an important part of Star Citizen and is likely to be a really major, major part of the game. There is money in information and artifacts too. Information gathering, connected to exploration I suppose. Some people will want to make credits from um, info trading and brokering, gathering information on systems, um, organisations, enemies, points of interest and selling them to the right people. And selling them to the right people was going to be quite important for the amount of money you make. There will likely be missions to smuggle or race large quantities of info to a target um, while fighting and stealthing your way through enemies. So there's probably quite a lot going on with the information game. Command roles. Some players will like the idea of being a captain on a capital ship, commanding a fleet or even leading a squad on the ground. This could take the form of running or helping run an organisation too. There will be credits available for people that can command well and the people around you will prosper too. Search and rescue. Literally searching for people to help out. This could be staff errors, selling fuel to ships that are empty, uh, cut the threads, um, the ambulances coming to save pilots that have ejected um, or are injured, or even a crucible coming to repair a damaged engine for a ship that's disabled in space. Space is dangerous. Someone has to be the good guys, or at least profit from their misfortune, right? Star Marines. There will be work for the budding first-person shooter player. Marines will be needed to assault and capture the ships, stations, anything on the ground too, and to defend from boarding actions. There is going to be a whole level to the, to the FPS module, a whole new level with its own weapons, armor, equipment, and customization options. It's like a whole other game, and it's gonna play a lot differently from flying a spaceship. So some people are gonna be really specialist at flying, some people are gonna be much better at doing the FPS module. There are loads more roles too, but I think that covers most of the main ones quite generally. So let's talk about ships. Ships can be purchased for real money as standalone ships or with game packages for around $15 more. You will want a game package so you can actually play the game once it's released. You'll also need module passes um, or alpha beta access to play the individual modules like um, the FPS module and Arena Commander. But they're only going to be $5 if you need to purchase them. There are also different phases of ship sales. Concept sales are kind of help fund and show interest in a ship and are normally limited for 10 days. It's the first time that a ship will be properly seen and that the first time that would have come on sale before. Um, so they normally come with lifetime insurance, um, LTI, uh, but can only be purchased as a standalone ship. No game packages there. 
hangar ready. This is when the ship is ready to be viewed in the hangar. They are normally available with game packages too at this point. Some of these sales are for a uh, limited time as well, so keep that in mind. Flight ready. The ship is fully ready for fly flyableness in Arena Commander. The ship will be available permanently to purchase and rent with wreck, unless it's a limited ship like the Super Hornet. It's important to note that once Star Citizen is out of beta, they will remove the ability to purchase ships with real money, or that's at least what they've said. But everything is fully obtainable in-game, and you really, really do not need to purchase anything more than a starter package to get into the game. I've come up with a brief tier system for ease of explaining how ships relate to each other, sort of. Um, it's a very rough guide based on cost, spirit of the ship, uh, upgradability, and loads of other random factors that are kind of made up. It's an incredibly rough guide. Please keep that in mind if you do get annoyed, um, if you feel like something should be in a different tier or did something didn't make sense. In fact, I encourage you to help uh, and discuss how we should categorize these ships uh, and tiers in the comments below. And just because something's in a lower tier doesn't mean it's any worse in combat than another ship. I can quite happily take down a Super Hornet in a 325A, for example. And loads of these ships are incredibly moddable too. So they, you could have an incredibly powerful tier 1 and tier 2 ship once they've upgraded a little bit. So, for example, uh, starter ships will be deemed tier 1. Uh, a step up from starter ships, the natural progression... Uh, would be tier 2, so that's going to be ships like the uh, 300 series and Avengers, uh, that sort of thing. Tier 3 ships will be more specialised or uh, reasonably powerful, so that's like most of the Hornets, the Cutlass series, um, that sort of ships. Ships around 80 to $130 ish. Um, tier 4 ships will be very powerful, quite expensive ships, uh, normally quite specialist in their roles. Uh, Super Hornets, um, Constellations, that sort of ships. Ships that are $150 or over for a package mainly, I suppose. Uh, tier 5 ships, very expensive ships that normally require large multi-crew um, or have very hard specialisation. We're talking in the range of $200 to $400. And then I've got tier 6 plus ships. This is stuff that's basically over $500. Um, it's really hard to rate and make a tier system for ships that are super limited, really big, we don't know too much about, or, or incredibly expensive. So I'm chucking everything that's over $500 really into tier 6. Just deal with it. I don't know how to rate a Idris compared to a um, Javelin. I, I have no idea. So we're just going to say they're big. <laughs> so let's start with the tier 1 starter ships, Auroras. The Auroras are a selection of utilitarian true starter ships, able to do a little bit of everything. They are slow and sluggish though. If you want to do a little bit of everything in the verse uh, and nothing too specialised, then the Aurora is a great starting choice. The Aurora LN being the star of the Aurora series, in my opinion, coming uh, with upgraded equipment, hard points uh, and weapons, enabling it to effectively handle itself in combat to a much higher degree than most of the other starter ships. Also, the Auroras can equip uh, four size two missiles if given the right mounts, uh, and this is very, very useful. The Mustangs. Faster than the Aurora series, these are still mostly starter ships, but have no cargo capacity and are really low on utility, really. The Alpha is basic, but okay in combat. The Mustang Beta is geared towards exploration and even has its own living area. Great for a starting exploration ship. The Gamma and Omega are a little bit more expensive, around $70 for a package, but these are racing variants and aren't bad as interceptors either. They are the Great, great choice for the starting racer. The Delta is a limited sail ship and is the military version of the Mustangs. It has armor that reduces damage to receive, uh, upgraded equipment and hard points, as well as having a rocket pod. I haven't seen any other uh, ships of the rocket pod other than the Starfarer Gemini. Um, none of the Mustangs have missiles, though, and the Delta is most definitely a Tier 2 ship, really, than a Tier 1 ship. Both the Mustangs and the Auroras only have one crew slot um, and are reasonably low cost from $30 to $70 for a starting package. But reasonably upgradable and I expect to see them used in a multitude of roles in the verse. The Misk Reliant. The Reliant is deemed to be a second tier starter ship, but for my scale it's still a tier 1 ship. It's a high-tech, semi-transforming ship that can switch from vertical to horizontal flight modes and will very much suit players that like Star Wars-inspired ships. It looks like a B-Wing. 
The Reliant is a true jack of all trades starter ship with a bit more cargo space. Whereas the other starters only have room for one crew, this has room for two. These ships will suit most roles at an entry level and can be heavily modded. There's also going to be a few variants too, like a news van one, uh, one for E-War, um, skirmisher models. If you could only have, or if I could only have one ship to start the game with, then this would probably be my choice. The Reliant will be on sale again once it's hangar ready and should be around $65 to $70 with a package. The 300 series. This is kind of like tier 2 ships really in my opinion. The 300 series are fast, reliable ships with a good stock loadout and a solo pilot seat. They have a small amount of cargo space too and they are good first choice after starter ships. The 300i is the basic model with no particular specialization, but all the 300 series come with really great stock gear. Uh, the 315p is suited for solo exploration or scavenging. The 325a is a really powerful fighter with missiles and a specialist targeting system that allows them to fire at multiple ships simultaneously. It also has armor reducing the damage it receives. It is one of the best early fighters in the game in my opinion. The 350R is an incredibly fast racing ship. It is also suited as a um, interceptor or scout. This is very much a tier 3 ship, at least it's the best racer in the game currently. The Avenger, very much a tier 2 ship. The Avenger will suit entry level bounty hunters um, and is a reasonably good dogfighter. It comes with cryo storage pods for prisoners. It has a above average speed at around 220, um, which is pretty good. And okay hard points for weapons. Most of its firepower comes from its nose gun which is a size 3 ballistic gatling gun. It has a large single engine and is currently being redone for balance so we're not really sure what's going to happen with it but I still feel it's very much going to be a tier 2 ship based on its cost. But I would expect it to be a bit more maneuverable once it's done. It's a good combat ship but not as good as a Gladius or a 325A really. Not yet anyway. Hornets. The Hornet range are solid dogfighters and have some hard specializations in there as well. Uh, they also have great firepower, equipment, but are average in speed and maneuverability compared to other fighters. They are what I would deem mid-tier fighters, tier 3 fighters uh, or specialist ships. They also have the option to um, mount up to 8 size 1 missiles, which is actually pretty damn good. The F7C is the standard model and it comes with... Um, okay, stock weapons and hard points to upgrade. It also comes with a cargo box. You can kind of do a little bit of everything, but it is mainly suited for dogfighting. The uh, F7C Ghost Hornet is the stealth variant with void armor and low emission equipment. It is much harder to see and detect than most other ships. I think if you want to do spying or espionage or stealth missions and um, probably some scouting, there's the Ghost is a great choice. I mean, it's hard to put it in a tier because it's one of the only few ships that can kind of do that uh, but for cost and value and stuff it's probably a tier 3 ship still. Uh, the uh, F7CR is the Hornet Tracker. It has a sensor suite allowing it to track and scan to a much higher degree than most other ships. They're gonna make great like additions to fleets and are suitable for bounty hunters, short range explorers, command vessels, um, and maybe pilots wanting to get into the E-War game as well. And then there's the F7CM, the Super Hornet. This is definitely a tier four ship. It has major firepower, an extra seat allowing for two crew, better equipment and hard points than the other Hornets. The only thing really holding it back is its speed. The Super Hornet is towards the top end as far as, far as fighters go anyway but does, doesn't really specialize in anything other than firepower for dogfighting. It's also a limited ship, so you can only really get it when there's sales around, um, or they're doing specials on Hornets, so keep that in mind if you want to get one before the game's released. The Cutlass series, mainly tier 3 ships in my opinion. The Cutlass are a jack-of-all-trades ship with a leaning towards piracy and salvage. They are a solid multi-crew choice, with two pilot seats and a turret, well, excluding the Cutlass Red anyway. That hasn't got a turret, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, as well as docking collars and tractor beams to hold ships in place so you can better help them. They're also going to be agile as well, though they might not have the best maximum speed. They're going to be very modular ships, uh, very moddable, and have the potential to be quite heavily armoured. 
If you wanted to be dogfighting, I would lean more towards a Hornet Gladius or a 325A. Um, but if you want to do a little bit of everything or be a pirate, then the Cutlass series is certainly a way to go. The Cutlass Black, this is the standard or well, cheapest model of the Cutlass. It's basically the standard pirate ship. <laughs> It's equipment that's going to be relatively stealthy too, um, less emissions on like its jump engines, that sort of thing. If you want to go pirate, then this is a good starter ship to go with. Uh, I say starter ship, a good starting ship to go with. It also has a decent cargo size. The Cutlass Red, this drops its turret to become a specialist ship. An ambulance. This is a small mobile medibay and it will help pe patch people up, rescue them, provide support for groups, but also could be used for boarding and piracy as well or to trick people. If you want to be a ambulance or a doctor in space, then the Cutlass Red is a great choice. The Cutlass Blue. This is very much a tier 4 ship. The Cutlass Blue is a combat police variant of the Cutlass series with uh, better armor, uh, better weapons, hard points and equipment. It also comes with prisoner cells as standard, making it extremely good, and not just in combat, but for bounty hunters or security vessels as well. We should be able to strip these out, these um, uh, prisoner cells, though, at some point, if you just want a bigger cargo hold for piracy. Arr! It could just be a more armoured pirate ship. The Gladius. So, in my head, this ship's a tier 3 ship. It's a skill-based dogfighter. It has a good amount of weapon options, is faster than other dogfighters at uh, 240 max speed, and is very manoeuvrable and pretty durable. It's a single pilot ship, and due to its speed and manoeuvrability, will much much better suit skilled pilots uh, as they're able to bring its reasonable firepower and great agility to bear into precision blows. Currently in AEC and Arena Commander, it is the ship that I most fear. It has six size two missiles as well, or the options to have them. That's a lot. It's a great ship. The M50 is a small, fast, agile racing ship. Not as fast as the 350R, but it will work perfectly well as a transport or um, even an interdiction fighter. Um, interceptor, that kind of thing. Um, it has incredibly small amount of armor and is tiny. It is like a little mosquito or a space motorbike almost. Um, it races differently than the 350R, so you could... Good 350R pilots are going to beat you because they're just faster. And if they can take the corner as well, they're just going to do better. But on a, a race that's like off-piste, then the M50 might have a better chance to win. It is very agile. It is pretty cool. If you like that sort of ship, then the M50s is probably a tier 3 ship that's probably right for you. Though it just doesn't have enough firepower or armor or anything for me, and I'm not really into racing. Right, an alien ship that I can't pronounce. It's a Xi'an Scout. It's the Katal Al. Katal Al. That ship. <laughs> Don't rage at me. Uh, it doesn't have a traditional engine. Instead, it uses many thrusters to propel itself. I haven't seen it in game. It's not even hangar ready properly yet or anything like that. Um, and it's going to be fast and unique. Probably going to be tier 3, tier 4. It's going to be, at, it's possible that it could be outfitted for racing. It's going to be incredibly agile, but we're not entirely sure how it's going to work yet. So we can't really categorize it. Um, it's going to suit players that want something a bit unique. <laughs> That's all I can say, really. Uh, the Gladiator is a two-man light bomber. Um, it has a turret for a second crewman to operate and is totally operable as a missile boat too. Very, very powerful missile boat, in fact. And it's totally usable by a single crewman as well. Um, it's a very versatile combat ship. And the UEE Navy will use gladiators and hornets together in unison on carriers to form effective fighter bomber wings. Freelancers. Where the Cutlass is more suited to piracy, the Freelancer is a... Combat capable series, but leans more towards trade and exploration. Great for two players to co-crew. They are fast and manoeuvrable. They have large side mounted turrets as well as a rear manned gun. Um, they're a great choice for traders and explorers in the early game and are likely to be really loved by people that like Firefly or Deep Space Nine. Um, the Misc Freelancer is the standard multi-role ship, but doesn't really specialize or excel in anything. It can do a little bit of everything though. The Freelancer DUR or DUR is the exploration variant with lots of high tech shizzle whizzle enabling you to scan, uh, map and explore as well as travel further. It's If you want to explore then this is a great mid tier ship to do that in. A natural upgrade from like the 315p. Uh, uh, this is where the explorers start to 
get into that own. And if you don't want to spend too much money, then the Freelancer DUR is a great choice for an explorer. The Freelancer Max. This is the transport variant with more engines and a larger cargo bay. Uh, for small haul transport uh, with a little bit of a combat edge, this is probably one of the best ships around. If you want to be a space trader, but want to do a little bit of the combat, then yeah, go, go for this. I, I love the Max. I love the idea of the chassis of the Freelancer Max having loads of big engines. The Freelancer MIS or MIS. This is the combat variant of this series, becoming a missile boat. It even has a system for loading missiles. It has 10 size 2 missiles and 6 size 3 missiles, along with more powerful weapon hardpoints. It is a limited uh, sail ship, um, but is normally on sale a couple of times a year. In the verse, I s expect these are going to be really, really powerful, um, supporting groups or even just turning up and wiping out entire wings of fighters. Very, very powerful. I love the idea of missile boats. And um, I love the idea of having a freelancer ship that is very combat efficient. So, admittedly, some of the freelancers are borderline tier 4 ships. But the Constellations are true multi-crew tier 4 ships, really, in my opinion. Maybe not the Taurus. Well, the Taurus is really, I suppose. But make your own mind up. Uh, they've got man turrets, multiple bridge positions. They are extremely upgradable and versatile series. They're quite big. I mean... They're what, in other games, I would refer to them as a Corvette, but a Corvette is much bigger in Star Citizen. The Taurus is a stripped-down constellation. It's $150 to purchase as a standalone vessel, which isn't too bad for a large multi-crew ship. I say large, small multi-crew, but medium multi-crew. This variant leans towards trade and transportation, with the promise of becoming quite powerful and more specialised once it's got a few upgrades under its belt. The Andromeda is the more combat orientated uh, constellation coming with an additional turret, better equipment and a small manned fighter that can be launched to um, scout or help out in combat. It will very much suit a small group of people that want to do a multi-crew experience. Very good ships. I love the idea of the Andromeda as a combat vessel. The Aquila. This is a exploration variant of the series with better equipment for traveling long distances and scanning. It also comes with a buggy rover thing for a planetary exploration. It is the natural upgrade, in my opinion, for a freelancer DUR if you need something bigger or you have a larger crew. The Constellation Phoenix. Extremely expensive ship. Uh, it's a limited ship as well. And it's basically a high-tech luxury cruising variant. Very much tier 5 with great stock gear and improved buggy and the fighter. And I think it's even got a hot tub. It's very much super luxury uh, and overly excessive. It's better than the rest of the range pretty much at everything. But lacks spare cargo space because it's all taken up by equipment and buggies and, and little scout ships. If you are a bit extravagant um, or you're lucky enough to already have one of these, congrats. <laughs> the Caterpillar. The Caterpillar is an extremely modular multi-crew ship that is very suited towards boarding actions. Um, it's referred to as the Freelancer's evil twin in the lore, but think of it as a more moddable super cutlass. This is a very versatile multi-role ship leaning towards boarding, scavenging, and piracy, and makes a very good natural upgrade for um, the cutlass, really. If you want to go piracy and you want something bigger, the Caterpillar's for you. The Retaliator, another tier 5 ship in my opinion. The Retaliator is a large bomber, suited to players that want to be part of a fleet battle kind of game. Um, it houses devastatingly large torpedoes, but requires support if it's to bring them to bear on a defended or armed target. These are the sort of ships that will be killing Idrises and Javelins. They are, they're going to be taking down capital ships, but they need to work effectively in groups. You could also outfit these for civilian purposes, removing the, the torpedo bays and just putting cargo there instead. The Carrick is a large top tier exploration vessel for a crew dedicated to exploring the verse. It has its own buggy, its own medical bay, loads of scanning and mapping equipment. This is a ship for a group that want to explore the verse, uh, especially in dangerous areas that want to do huge long distance uh, exploring. It's going to be the, the exploration ship if you can afford it and if you can get it. It has a good amount of firepower and modularity too. The Vanguard is a large for a fighter, deep space fighter that is very suited to hunting and killing groups uh, of ships or powerful enemies. Um, it's very much a hunter killer. There's lots of guns and missiles, potential for torpedoes, uh, as well as military grade equipment here. It's likely to be more sluggish than a dogfighter, 
but it has a turret and a lot of firepower. Think of it as a large, heavy bird of prey. It has a uh, two crew max, uh, but is enti entirely usable with a single pilot, uh, and will also suit combat roles pretty much anywhere in the verse and any kind of combat role. The idea is that it can operate for long periods of time away from base uh, and will do um, a little bit of advanced mapping, tracking, um, e-war. Uh, it's basically a really high tier combat ship for one or two crewmen. The Redeemer, this is a gunship and dropship with a lot of firepower with the ability to carry a squad of marines into battle. Suitable for people that want to pilot their friends to attack stations, bases, um, and planets, I suppose, and to board enemy vessels. It's solidly in the tier 5 category. Um, this is a, a ship that definitely suits groups and suits marine players. The Jump 890. This is another luxury ship and it's pretty big. Think large space yacht. It's got a five-man crew, but room for a lot of other people to come sightseeing. It's a very combat-ready ship. It also has its own high-tech equipment just everywhere, uh, its own high-tech uh, runabouts so you can take a closer look at planets and phenomena. It was extremely expensive when it was on sale for around $650 ex excluding taxes, I think. And it's really for explorers, cruisers, command vessels, or for people that have extremely expensive tastes. Definitely a tier 6 ship. Um, it's top tier exploration too, I suppose, but with a massively luxury, excessive vibe. Let's talk about some of the industry ships that we've avoided so far. The Hull A to E series. The Hull A to E are progressively bigger and slower transport ships, starting with a, a van-sized ship in the form of a Hull A, um, going all the way up to a super tanker in the form of the Hull E. They are pretty vulnerable to being attacked by pirates, and the larger Hull series will require escorts and a lot of planning and a lot of investment because they hold so much cargo. They would range from um, tier 2 to 6 on my scale in ascending order. So um, at tier 2, the Hull A, um, think transit van. Uh, the Hull B, tier 3, think lorry. The Hull C, um, tier 4, think like a cargo train. Uh, then tier 5... The Hull D, think giant cargo ferry. You're going to have to think a lot about the investment for actually packing out the Hull D. Um, and they're going to be very vulnerable. And the Hull E, think bigger. This is like large organisational transport that could house an entire fleet or base. Um, this is very much max tier kind of transport. Um, absolutely insane for a single person to do. But I'm sure some people will try. The Banu Merchantman. This is my favourite trade ship. Um, the Banu is comparable in size to that of a Hull C, um, and for its size, it's very fast and efficient and will really suit traders that want to concentrate on making as much money as possible from trailing, trading um, and want to do it with just themselves or with a small crew. The ships are um, big, well-armoured, well-equipped with defences uh, and being fast enough and well-equipped en enough, hopefully, to um, smash through blockades and uh, escape from pursuers. I love the idea of the Banu Merchantman. It looks great. I think it's going to be a great cho choice for a uh, solo or a small crew to make a lot of money trading, even through dangerous trade routes and on the fringes of the galaxy. This is one of the ships that is very much tier 5 in my opinion and is likely to have a, a different cost other than just credits. You're likely going to have to have quite a lot of influence or reputation with the Banu to be able to buy one or you're going to have to pay a premium to get one from a player. The Orion Miner. The Orion is a high tier mining ship and refinery. If you want to mine valuable metals and materials out of asteroids for wealth, then this is the ship for you. It's pretty damn big uh, and there is plenty of roles on board for miners. Piloting, um, scan operators, cargo operators, beam operators, refinery operators. Um, there's also requirements for uh, defense of these ships uh, as they can have quite big hauls of loot, especially when it's refined down. Um, but they do have pretty good shields and defences though. You can also refine ore on the Orion and that can make it quite efficient space-wise when you're compacting all of that valuable ore down. They were around uh, $350 I think in the last sale excluding taxes. Um, but if you want to be a dedicated miner and you don't mind hiring NPCs or getting a, a couple of other players with you then this is definitely the best choice for mining currently available. 
the Starfarer and Starfarer Gemini. I suppose these are offshoots of mining again, um, but they're more a lot more specialised. Starfarers specialise in fuel harvesting and refining. Uh, it carries about like 25% less than the Hull Sea, but they can literally scoop up all their cargo from gas giants and then refine it on the move. They also have uh, special refueling equipment, allowing them to top up spaceships on the move as well. So they're invaluable in a fleet and can make a lot of money if they find a ship that's just run out of fuel for some reason. If you like the idea of trading and harvesting in fuel, then the Starfarer is definitely the way to go. Um, there's also a limited version, the Starfarer Gemini, that reduces the capacity of the fuel it can carry, but comes with better equipment and hard points. It's basically the military variant. These are kind of tier 4, 5 kind of ships. They're very specialist in their trade and, and refining and harvesting skills. The Reclaimer. The Reclaimer is basically a big salvage ship capable of pretty much engulfing an entire group of smaller ships and breaking them down into component parts. Nom nom nom. There is a lot of credits to be made from munching people's ships, um, for clearing wreckage and salvage, and for finding fresh battlefields, I suppose. Fresh Battlefield is a gold mine for a Reclaimer pilot and crew. They can be outfitted for repair and support of fleets too. Definitely a tier 5 ship. Now we're moving on to more specialist ships, or ships I don't know that much about. Uh, the Herald. The Herald is a small, fast info runner ship. It's perfect for uh, ECM, E-War, broadcasting, spying, and info collecting, uh, scanning stuff, and can be outfitted probably for racing as well. It's supposed to be really fast. They'll be on sale again once it's hangar ready. Um, I expect them to be about tier 3 ships, but they're going to be very specialist. They're, they're, there could be a few other ships that are able to do what they do. Vandal Scythe. This is literally a captured Vandal Scythe, and this ship is in extremely limited supply and sells for loads on the grey and black markets. I think it's like around $3,000 or something stupid. Um, you can't get them anymore in Star Citizen. You might be able to get them in the verse or be able to capture them, but I don't know. Um, these are, I think they're the ships we fight in Vandal Swarm, basically with the Vandal Swives. One of those that we kill waves and waves of. Um, they aren't available for players to use yet. It's a light fighter with a penchant for ramming. The Lightning FA, I don't know too much about it at all. I know it's going to be a limited um, UEE Navy combat vessel in Squadron 42. We might be able to get them in the actual, um, in the verse as well. Um, we'll have to see, but I expect they're going to be very, very powerful combat ships. Uh, the Espera Paula is going to be a powerful boarding ship. Espera Paula. <laughs> say that properly. Um, powerful boarding ship. Um, probably suitable for pirates and marines. Uh, the MISC Endeavour Research Platform. Uh, so this is something that's quite exciting me. It's a big research station and power uh, like lab. Uh, power lab? Science lab. That still hasn't been concepted yet, so we're waiting to see exactly what's in store for us. Um, but I expect to be pleasantly surprised, and we get to see more of the science and research game, as well as probably manufacturing as well with this. Uh, the Genesis Starliner. Again, this one hasn't been concepted yet, but it's going to be a specialist passenger liner. If you want to ferry large groups of people around, this is for you. There's likely to be specialist missions for this too. The Crucible is literally going to be a flying toolbox and support ship. Uh, these will be critical in fleets to help uh, repair uh, ships quickly and can even create space scaffolding, I think. Uh, again, we're waiting on this to be concepted to actually see exactly what's going to be going on with the Crucible. So let's talk briefly about large and capital ships that players will be able to fly, use, pilot, steal. Um, so you've got the Idris M and P. So these are originally they were going to be corvettes. But now they've been getting bigger and bigger. So now they're frigates. <laughs> um, the Idris M is the military version. Why say military version? It, it's basically got a big rail cannon on it compared to the P, which has got that mount removed. So these going to be mini carriers as well. You're going to be able to carry some ships in there, and they're going to suit people that want to get into the fleet game, uh, want a command vessel for. Uh, a, their corp, that sort of thing. Um, they're very expensive though. I mean, if you wanted to buy one, they're in incredibly limited stock. Um, you can buy them through giant game packages that cost like $10,000 and um, that sort of silly stuff. Um, or occasionally they're on sales for like around uh, $1,250, that sort of thing. They're very expensive. You can get them in verse though. That's probably the best way of getting them. Get them when the game's released. Javelin Destroyer. I mean, these were on incredibly limited sale. Um, they sold for $2,500 each, uh, and they're destroyers. Um, they are literally capital ships that are supposed to destroy other large ships and capital ships. Big guns, boom, boom, boom. Uh, Panther and Bengal. 
These are carrier ships, as far as I'm aware. Uh, the Bengal being absolutely ma massive and the Panther being a smaller variant. Um, I, I mean, not too much is known about them other than they're going to carry a lot of people. Um, I'm assuming the players can steal them in the verse and it's something for us all to aim for, stealing a giant carrier and flying it around or ramming another carrier with it. So, I mean, that's a rough roundup of the ships, roles, and limiting factors in the verse. Um, there are going to be a lot more variants to the ships than we mentioned as well, and even more ships coming out. So, there's going to be loads in the way of balancing as well, so just kind of deal with it. We can only talk about what we know at the moment. But anyway, guys, please tell me if I've missed anything. Um, please feel free to discuss what I've talked about. Um, what are you planning to do in the verse? Tell me. I'm always interested in that. It actually gives me ideas for... Um, content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help me and I will see you in the verse. And I forgot to say guys, if you'd like more specific information on any of these particular topics or ships, please check out some of our other playlists. Most of the other ships will have more in-depth um, videos specifically for them. So please check that out guys and thanks very much.